music. What up, fam? Welcome to Living For You. I am your favorite brother. I am your favorite cousin. I am your favorite uncle. I am your best friend's best friend. It's me, Dr. Larry. How y'all doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all look good. So y'all must be doing excellent because y'all look very, very good. Um, today we have the table set out as we normally do and we're here to encourage you to sit down and get ready for this goodness because we got some good stuff today. Today we're talking about dads. Today we're talking about fathers, black fathers, black men standing up and being daddies. That is what it's about and that is what we're talking about today. So go ahead and have your seat, prepare yourself a place. We've got you there. So welcome. Y'all know what I do. <laughs> My name is Dr. Larry. For those of you who are new, I am a certified life coach. I'm also a spiritual coach, hence the candle in the background, amongst other things. Um, what I do, my specialization, for those of you who don't know, my niche is African-American males between 18 to 40 who have experienced the trauma and somehow they are dealing with the residue still in the present from that trauma. And my job is to help them to move into the present. Um, I've created a program that works well for my clients. I own a life coaching practice. The practice is called Live For You Coaching. Um, we you know, try to help people to get into the present moment and just be real, loving, compassionate, and accepting for themselves. Live for you, being able to be totally at peace and at present with who they are. So that's me. Um, Y'all know already on this particular channel, we don't ask for much. All we ask is that you subscribe to our channel, tell a friend or two, have them subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you know when things are posted. For me, I post things twice a week, every Monday and every Thursday, so be prepared for that so you get the notification on that. Go ahead and like the video and comment. Ask questions. Give me suggestions on things to talk about. I want to use my life coaching certification expertise and my knowledge about a whole bunch of other things, including religion, history, and so forth, to serve you. So that's why we're here. We come to this table every week, twice a week, for the same uh, thing, to just be able to encourage, grow. Like I say often, we're all on the same journey. We're just going about it in different ways. And so somehow we have to come in the middle and connect. So like I said, subscribe, hit the bell, <laughs> um, like and like the video and comment. Um, like I said earlier, today we are going to be talking about fathers. Um, I read an Essence article. I've been watching things on the news and seeing different things on social media about Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union accepting their gay son and all his glory and everything that he shows up as, they're fully embracing that. And of course, in our community, we have a, a, a deep-seated issue with sexuality in general, but definitely with homosexuality and same-sex, same-gender loving and same-sex attraction. So we have kind of issue with same-gender attraction. Um, and so they received backlash. And of course, that's going to happen um, because that is kind of the, the common way of us handling that situation. But I wanted to specifically, and I'm proud of Gabrielle Union too, but I wanted to specifically give a shout out to D-Wade. Because here's the thing. For him to be so accepting of his son Zion's sexuality, it's a major thing. Because one, he's an athlete. He's a well-known athlete. He's in the NBA. It had, there's a culture amongst athletes sometimes of homophobic rhetoric. Um, and we know it. We've seen it. We've heard it. It's kind of just boys being boys as they will put it or as it's being noted throughout our experience in this life. And so he's putting himself really at a disadvantage by coming out with his son coming out by exposing, not by coming out with his son comes out in acceptance of his son. And he's not a gay man. He's not associated with sexual, uh, same-sex love, none of that. He's just a supporting father of his son. And there are several things when I hear him talk, when I read the article, when I see the interviews, um, that he's one, being an observant parent. He started to note his son's sexuality, he said in the Essence article, around three years old, which means that he was a parent who was involved 
who was active and who was observing what his child was doing and being at three years old. See, a lot of times, like, you know, we are quick to say, well, sexuality is a choice. It's a choice. We don't know that. Science doesn't know that. There's nothing that we have that tell you whether it's a choice or not. It just is something that exists in different diverse forms, and you never would know. And so since we don't have conclusive evidence on choice or nature or nurture, we just allow it to blossom and be and show up and accept people. So he had noticed this at three and started observing and really already then started to really rationalize in his mind. What if my son comes out to me? How would I deal with that? And so he took time to think about it. And that's always a great thing. A thinking father and a praying father are the best kind of, a thinking father, praying father, and a loving father are the kind of fathers that we all would aspire to be, no matter who we are. So he thought about it. And he even stated in the Essence article that he had to unlearn things. He had to unlearn patterns and prejudice that he had himself just based on the environment that he grew up in. And that's, that's a fact. You know, I grew up in environments like that. A lot of African-American men, we grow up in environments that really are built around this idea that masculinity looks a certain way, that sexuality is heterosexuality or, or, or opposite sex attraction, that, that those are our standards. But what happens is the world is bigger than that. And many of, many of us don't even get the opportunity or opportunities to live outside of that experience. And so sometimes our view of life is so narrow and so closed off and we develop patterns of thinking that in order to be successful in life or in order to be a fully present parent, father, black father, as D. Wade is being, we would have to unlearn certain patterns and certain ideas and certain thoughts. Um, I read, I'll read a quote by him. It was a tweet that I thought was interesting because this isn't for show. This isn't for nobody. This is for loving his child. And you can see it. So the tweet says, stupidity is a part of the world we live in. So I get it. But here's the thing. I've been chosen to lead my family, not y'all. So we will continue to, to be us and support each other with pride, love, and the smile. I'll put, I, it was on the screen. Hopefully you saw it. But that's a wonderful father. You know, that is a wonderful example. D. Wade is giving us in real time the example of what it's like to be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful father. Not just somebody who shows up, gets someone pregnant, walks away, or not even involved, even when they are present. I can say, from my own personal experience, I didn't always have that as a father. Um, and I think a lot of black men can agree out there. Comment down if you understand what I'm saying. A lot of us don't have the example of a father who loves us unconditionally, right? Who just lets us show up, lets us be us and embrace all that we are. Not just embrace all that we are, but be present enough to even demonstrate what it's like to be man, a man, what it's like to be a father, what it's like to be a husband or a boyfriend or a significant other to our moms, we don't see that many times in our community. It's unfortunate. Now, there is a trend that I have noticed that I've also seen things online, because like I said, I read a lot. And so I've seen so many things. It seems like there is a trend now to be a good father. And I think that that's wonderful. Uh, and we should keep that trend and make it bigger and bigger and bigger to where it's just the norm. So I, I see there is an increase of more involved fathers in their children's lives. I've seen fathers dancing on on YouTube with their daughters in ballet. I've seen fathers having conversations. Uh, there's one online where this guy, he talks to his, his infant and the infant apparently talks back and they're going back and forth and it's really adorable. So there seems to be a popular trend of fathers being present and that's a great thing because the, there is an importance of a father's role in a child's life especially boys, especially little black boys. All studies, there are many, 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 many studies on black boys and how they learn. They learn from mentors. 
They do well when they have a mentor and they're in a mentor-mentee situation. They learn better from black teachers. I've, I've been an educator for a very long time. And one of the things I know is that my African-American male students gravitate towards me because I represent a father or a friend or a, a confidant or that favorite cousin, that favorite brother, some older brother, that somebody that they can, can understand at all levels. I've worked on from the kids to the adults, and on all level I, levels, I see a similar pattern. So the statistics and the studies are proven in my life. So that father role figure is very important because you're the initial mentee. I mean, you're, you're the initial mentor. You're the initial person who is guiding that child, teaching them who they're going to be. And that takes a very important dynamic. Because what it needs in order for it to be successful is a dad who knows themselves, a dad who is accepting and loving to themselves to show them how to demonstrate self-love, self-confidence, awareness to be able to do it for somebody else. And so I always recommend, always, and I know, I know brothers, it's hard for us, especially when we get of a certain age. We don't need nobody prying on our mind. <laughs> we don't need any therapy. I think it is an excellent thing for a black man, even if he's of a certain age, to have a therapist or, hey, a life coach, me, <laughs> somebody who will help them to, to navigate through what they're trying to navigate in life. Somebody who can bounce things off because a lot of times it's hard to communicate, right? It's hard to communicate even with the opposite sex or with our children or with our bosses or even with our family members. So it's always good to have somebody that you can have a healthy ability to express yourself, all of it, and somebody who's going to help you think about your expression so that you handle life in a healthy way. And you become more self-aware, spiritually grounded, naturally rooted, and all of the things that make you a true, you know, that makes you true to being a father. And you, and by having that, you put that out there into your sons and your sons grow up and do the same thing. And we, next thing you know, we get a generation of powerful, intelligent, prideful, well, pride with men with pride and confidence, confidence. And that's a great thing. So that's a very important dynamic. The father role in society and not just in the family is very instrumental because you're creating the gentleman of the next situation, now I, of the next generation. Now, I know fathers also have an important role for daughters, but in this particular conversation, we're talking about fathers' roles for sons. They're not just, they're role models. They're those people we look up to, we want to be like, we want to emulate. Why do you think young men follow athletes and rappers or even join gangs or join sports teams and find camaraderie? We all seek camaraderie with our father. We all seek camaraderie with the man who's indirectly over us and who was given the responsibility that we chose to come up into this world to give to him. And so it's a very important job when you decide to be a father or when you don't decide, but you're made into a father in some capacity. And I don't want this just to be limited to birth fathers. This is also adoptive fathers. This is also fathers by default, stepfathers, any man. Because I even take my, like I said, I take my role as a teacher seriously because I know I come in sometimes as a surrogate father. And so therefore I am jumping in that place and I am mindful that I'm dropping things out for the young men who are coming up underneath me and behind me. Even if it's just a small nugget, I drop it so that they have something to begin to plant and to build into something greater. So it is great. And so a father who can accept his child like the way is doing with his son Zion is a father who has a certain level of self-awareness and self-love. A father who knows that if I don't show this compassion for my child, then I might lose my child. A lot of people don't want to deal with the realities of things in the community and things that are impacting people. Um, I meet young men all the time. I've seen documentaries. I've personally known people 
whose parents, when they come out the closet, when they decide to be who they feel they authentically are or who they actually are authentically in that moment, that they get kicked out the house. The parents don't want anything to do with them. You either do it my way or don't, or, or do it somewhere else. You either worship God the way I believe because it's a sin or you got to go. And their parents kick them out. And then now they left to the devices of the world. They left to the devices of the elements, of somebody else coming in and teaching them something that might not be healthy for them. They left to try to fend it for themselves when they hadn't been given the tools fully to deal with it. One of the saddest things I saw was the gully kids in Jamaica. I love my Jamaicans, but I thought that that was sad that you have a whole cast of young men living in a gully, struggling, fighting to survive day in, day out, facing harassment, Ostra ostra being ostracized, can't get it out. Being ostracized for being gay. When there should be men who step up and say, you know what? We need to put you under our wings. I may not be fully aware, or I may not be fully informed or knowledgeable about same gender love, but I do know what it's like to be a, either a father or a son or a brother, uncle, or cousin of somebody, or even myself, who needs somebody to cover me with masculine energy. To cover me with love. To show me and embrace me. And so to leave those young men in that gully and to treat them that way, to me, it's just, it's beyond heartbreaking. Because at the end of the day, whether it's your child or not, you have a responsibility to the world. You have a responsibility to society to produce good men. And so I'm so proud of D-Wade stepping up with his platform and saying, you know what, regardless of how you feel, regardless of how I feel, I'm a father. And as a father, I am, I am a direct link to my child being dysfunctional. I am a direct link to my child having a healthy mind and I take it seriously and I'm going to make sure I do all I can to instill love, appreciation, acceptance, and authenticity in my child and allow him to show up. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And so I wanted to dedicate this particular video to the fathers. To the fathers who are saying, I love my children. To the fathers who are showing up. To the fathers who are caring. To the fathers who are becoming the backbone. Black men, I see you guys are doing it. And I know there, I know there are good fathers out there. Contrary to popular belief, I know that there are fathers who are stepping up, loving their child, accepting their children, and doing what they need to do. And I commend all of you. All of the D-Wades out there in the world, I commend all of you. But if there's extra help and support that you may need, brother, there's all kinds of resources you can run to. Um, our resources is Live For You Coaching. You can go to www.liveforyoucoaching. We got resources for you. I know my niche is 18 to 40, but beyond, I move beyond that. You know, the goal is to help make black men healthy and holistic. And we all got patterns. We all got things, mindsets that we can recondition and that we can get more present and we can create more present beings in our children and our children can create more present beings in our grandchildren. And we got generations of positivity, present, holistic, happy, healthy people. So www.liveforyoucoaching.com. You can always contact me directly at Dr. Larry at liveforyoucoaching.com. You can also hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. It is Dr. Larry Smith. Uh, it should be on the screen. So however, reach out, comment, give suggestions. Let's have a dialogue. Let's do what we need to do because at the end of the day, our goal, our only goal in life, and what your only goal should be, what my only goal is, is to be more present. And you can't be present if you're not allowing yourself or those you love, especially your children, live to be their authentic selves. I love y'all. See y'all next time.